Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be putting two drugstore powder foundations to the test. They are both by L'Oreal. We're gonna be testing the Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation that is supposed to be made for mature skin. And then we're also gonna be testing the Viral Laurel Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Powder Foundation. So I'm so excited to try these both. I actually ordered this one to test because it is a product that's gotten a lot of hype on TikTok and Instagram and it's just kind of one of those viral products I wanted to try. When I saw this on Ulta's website, it also suggested this, and I was reading the differences between the two. This one specifically called out being made for mature skin, so I thought, okay, we are gonna put these to the test. Um, before we get started, I do wanna read you a couple of like key points and benefits from each foundation, because like I said, they're both from L'Oreal. They are both powder foundations. They look similar in the compact. Um, so I wanted to like see what is the real difference between these two. So first we're going to talk about the creamy perfect or the creamy powder foundation by L'Oreal. So the L'Oreal Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation retails for $15.99 on Ulta.com. It says, finally, makeup specially designed for mature skin. Age Perfect by L'Oreal Paris Cosmetics is a creamy powder foundation infused with a ceramide antioxidant complex and minerals for coverage that does not cake. Instantly upon application, lines, pores, and dark spots appear blurred, leaving skin with a satin, shine-free finish. Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation provides buildable coverage Coverage. Key benefits, it's formulated with a ceramide antioxidant complex and minerals, blurs pores, um, evens tones, and provides natural coverage that won't cake or settle into lines. So that is how this one is being described. So now let's look at the L'Oreal Infallible 24-hour uh, fresh wear foundation. This retails for about the same price. It's a dollar less. $14.99 is what this retails for on Ulta.com. It says the L'Oreal Infallible 24-hour fresh wear foundation in a powder provides full coverage with a natural matte finish. Blurs, evens, and smooths skin. Weightless, creamy texture. Okay, so they both are described as having a creamy texture. Fuses with skin upon application. Color remains true throughout the day without drying or fading. Matte finish for up to 24 hour and suitable for all skin types, oily skin and acne prone skin. Okay, so Really, they both are described as being a creamy finish. Um, the Age Perfect was described as having more of a satin shine-free finish, whereas the Infallible is described as having a natural matte finish. Okay, so I assume they're both gonna be, you know, shine-free because they are a powder, but it sounds like the Infallible 24 Hour is gonna have more of a matte finish while this is gonna look a little bit more skin-like. They also really hone in to the 24-hour long wear benefit in this this foundation. So um, we're going to put these both to the test. I don't have any foundation on. I'm going to put the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear on the right side of my face, and then we're going to do the Age Perfect on the left side of my face. I should say that I'm pretty sure I got the color wrong on the Infallible. I did open it and swatch it, and I did immediately notice a difference in the texture of these two. The 24, or I'm sorry, the Age Perfect felt so creamy and satin-like to the touch, um, where this felt like a little bit more of a powder, you know, as you would expect a powder to feel, right? They're both powders, but this had that more of a kind of a drier um, powder swatch. This is a little too dark. I don't know why I didn't order the same color in both of these. I don't know if they don't come in the same color. I would assume they do, um, but I am shade, I, or I picked up shade tw 220 sand in this. Maybe they were out of it. That's what it was. They were limited on shades, I think. So I picked the closest, which was 220 sand. And then in this one, I picked 315 natural buff. Um, this is definitely going to be, it looks too dark or yellow, but we'll see, you know, we'll make it work. I am a huge fan of the infallible uh, liquid foundation. You guys know that it's probably my favorite drugstore foundation. Um, so I have high hopes for this one. Yet I also have high hopes for this one too because it, feel, it felt pretty amazing when I swatched it. Okay, you guys, so we are up close. I want you guys to take a good look at my skin before we get started so you can see what we're working with and what we have to cover. I did apply a little concealer, but aside from that, I have nothing on. I don't even have my tinted SPF, so I don't have any product that has any tint or color or pigmentation on my skin. This is what my skin looks like. I don't have a whole lot to cover, so I think either of these 
foundations are gonna offer just as much coverage as I need. Um, I do have a little bit of little redness here. You can see that my pores and my texture is probably my biggest skin concern. When I'm looking for a foundation, I'm really looking for foundations that don't magnify my pores. My skin is pretty normal. I live in Austin, Texas, so it's really hot here. It's not quite hot yet, surprisingly. It's June 2nd today and it's not yet 100, <laughs> so that's good. But I'm always looking for foundations that have more of a natural matte finish because of the climate that I live in. Not necessarily because I'm super oily, but just because, you know, I live in a hot, hot climate. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna start with the lighter one first just so I don't, on my brush, get, you know, the darker one first. Okay, so this is the Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation. You open it, it has a little sponge and mirror on the side. I like to apply powder foundations with a brush. I just feel like it gives more of a natural coverage. I have two brushes here that I might go between. So the BK Beauty 105 brush is a great brush for powder foundation. It uh, really does a great job of picking up a lot of product but buffing it in a natural way. Um, it's dense but it's also got some give to it. So it's not one of those super dense. I would avoid, guys, uh, dense brushes that have no give. Do you see how this has give? If it's just super dense and you can barely even get it to move like this, it's going to have a really hard time blending out, um, especially if you've just applied your moisturizer, which I haven't. It's been a good 45 minutes or so since I've applied my moisturizer. So my skin feels a little like supple. It doesn't feel totally dry, but it's definitely not like, you know, freshly applied. Okay. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of pick up some product on my brush by pressing it. You can see that it picks up a good amount of product. And I'm gonna start in the center of my face. This brush also applies product so fast because it is so large, it takes like no time. I'm gonna take a little more time here because I'm gonna be you know, talking with you guys and really you know, looking at the foundation. If you want a lot of coverage, the sponge is the way to go. Um, you're just gonna have a harder time blending. It's gonna look less natural. Yeah, so this actually has a very natural satin finish. It doesn't look like a powder foundation. Okay, so this is with the Age Perfect Creamy powder foundation applied. I have nothing applied on the right side of my face yet, so you guys can kind of compare to see what kind of coverage you're getting. You're definitely getting, I mean, I did build it up to um, get, you know, as much coverage as I could possibly get from this foundation with a brush. I have enough coverage. It offers me the coverage that I want. I'm a little surprised because I do still see my pores pretty noticeably. I expected them to be a bit more blurred. Let me actually take a sponge and go over that area and see if that helps with the pores, but I don't think it will because I did take my brush and really buff around that area. Yeah, so the pores are still pretty noticeable. Yeah, um, even going over it with a sponge, I feel like I didn't really quite blur my pores. It does have more of a satin finish, so I actually see a little bit of a glow here, which is so odd because it's a powder. So coverage is good. I wouldn't say it's full coverage, but you can definitely build it up to get more coverage. Very natural skin, skin-like finish when it comes to a powder. It's definitely not going to have like you know, it's not going to be like a liquid foundation, but it doesn't look like a powder foundation. Okay, let's go in with the 24-hour infallible uh, powder on my right side, and I really hope this color doesn't look too dark. <laughs> I already know it's going to be a little dark, but let's not hope it's too dark. Okay, so it's a lot more pink for sure than the last one I did. Okay, I feel like this one is actually blurring my pores a bit better. Perfect. Yeah, I feel like the right side, my pores look a little softer than they do on my left. Do you guys see that? And I feel like I got a little more coverage there too. So here, here are the two foundations. I can clearly see a difference aside from just the color, but I feel like my skin looks more blurred and smooth over here. This definitely has more of a matte powder finish where this looks a little more um, satin. Coverage, I would say I'm getting a little more from this, although they're pretty comparable. Now that I kind of built them both up, they are pretty comparable. This color actually kind of worked. Isn't that funny how you can kind of make foundations work even when you know it's just not the right shade? Okay, I'm gonna go in and apply my blush and bronzer lips and I'll be right back. Okay, so makeup is on. I'll have everything listed and linked in the description box that I used. Um, okay, so final thoughts before we go on with our day. I am gonna check in and do a full day wear test on these foundations, but um, looking at the both of them, they're pretty uh, similar. Like I'm actually glad. I was a little worried I was gonna walk around with an orange and yellow side of my face, but they both blended into the skin pretty good. Um, I do feel like the infallible wear slightly blurred my pores a bit better than the creamy did. The creamy does have more of a natural 
like satin finish though. So if you have veered away from powder foundations because they make your skin look dry or um, they just look too powdered or matte on the skin, but you love the idea of the simplicity and the quickness of it, um, I would say this is definitely more of the more satin-like ones that I've ever tried. Probably the Fenty Beauty has a good one too, but as far as drugstore, this one's nice. Um, okay, it is 9.19 a.m. And I'm gonna wear this throughout the day. I'm gonna head to the office today. Um, I'll do a couple check-ins there later today, and then we will see how these uh, foundations do um, throughout the day. Hey friends, so it is a little after one o'clock and I wanted to step outside so you guys could see in natural light. I actually, let me go find an area where I get more natural light because I'm under a lot of trees up here. We are like canopied under trees. So I just took a look in the mirror to kind of compare the two foundations. And what I'm finding is, is that the right side, the infallible is actually, even though it's more matte, it actually is getting a little more dewy um, and not kind of staying as well, I feel like as the other side, they're very similar. I mean, it really took me kind of like really looking at it up closely. At first glance, I didn't really see much change or much difference in either. But if I'm really, you know, looking closely, I do notice that I have a little more shine on this side. But otherwise, they both still look really good. I don't feel like I need to touch up at this point. Um, it has been four hours, so I will check back in with you guys in a few more. Hey, everyone. So it is about 7 p.m., and this is my last and final check-in. Things are pretty shiny on both sides. I'm gonna I'm standing in front of a natural window here, so I'm gonna let you guys see. I thought of possibly touching up before filming this little check-in, but then I thought I wanted to really show you guys what is happening. I am gonna go touch up with Pouty here shortly, and we'll see which one looks better after you touch up. Um, I touched up earlier today, probably around 2.30 p.m., but I, have, I haven't I have touched up since then. And you guys, I am super shiny. Not, not, neither side really looks good. The infallible like 24-hour wear um, did not hold up as well as I thought it did. The, I find that the liquid actually holds up better than this did today. So see how shiny I am? I mean, yeah. Whoa, look at that. Okay, let me go touch up and I will be right back with my final thoughts. Okay, you guys, so my final thoughts on these two powder foundations. After touching up, I used the Revlon Candid Loose Powder. Things look really nice. I feel like they both touch up and freshen up really well when you do touch up with powder. I mean, five minutes ago, my face was super shiny. As far as the differences between the two, the main difference is the texture. The Revlon uh, Creamy Powder uh, foundation definitely feels creamier to the touch. It feels silkier. It actually applies more like a satin finish, like immediately upon application where the infallible definitely is more matte. I did feel like the infallible matte slightly blurred my pores a bit more than the creamy powder did. It wasn't like, you know, a major difference, but between the two, I did find that that one made my pores look a little bit more, um, smooth. As far as wearability throughout the day, I feel like the creamy powder wore a little bit better for a little bit longer. Now at this point in the day, they both looked like a hot mess and I don't think neither one of them looked worse than the other. Um, but those would probably be the key differences is going to be the texture, the initial finish when you apply it, um, and the longevity. Although neither one of them I found to be a super long wearing powder foundation on me today. Of course, things can always, you know, vary depending on the climate, the day. It was warm today, but it wasn't really humid. It wasn't excessively hot today. I say excessively hot. I think it was like 90 degrees, 95 degrees, but it wasn't humid. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time outside. So there really was no reason that I should have looked that shiny. Um, so yeah, those are my final thoughts. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you've tried either of these foundations, let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. Thank you.